What is up guys, Leaky Valve here, and we are back with another episode of F1 2021 My Team Career. This is episode 4 now for our home Grand Prix, our team's home Grand Prix, the Canadian Grand Prix. And as you can see in the background, we have playing our new one-off livery for our home GP. Uh, I couldn't find anything that looked like our flag, and I think this is kind of the closest thing I could find to it. I wish the car was a little bit whiter. Uh, where it was white, I, I put it all the way as far white as we could make it and it ended up coming up kind of silver, but I still like it. I think it looks really good with the black, red, and the white. Uh, we didn't have much to get into in terms of the upgrades or anything. We had a lot of stuff come over from Azerbaijan, so we we're going to get straight in to qualifying. The car felt pretty good throughout practice. It, it, it felt a little bit on edge on some of the longer runs that I did in practice. But uh, I'll give you guys the first lap, and you guys can see what we came up with. I'll let you go over the setup to see what I ran here. I basically kept this setup for the entirety of the race weekend. And we will let young Aiden Jackson take you on his flying lap, or qualifying one. All personnel be aware, car leaving. All right, so as we cross the line for our first flying lap, it ends up being a 109.9. It wasn't the best. I feel like we went a little bit faster in qualifying. Uh, second lap, we were up a little bit coming into the final chicane. The car just barely sticks. We ended up putting on a fresher set of tires. Out of, uh, out of the garage for our first lap, we ended up sticking on an older set of softs because they used too many in practice so we had to go with a used set for our first run and then we went with a brand new set to try and push us through into Q2 unfortunately our teammate down at the very bottom Schwartzman passes her from the back of the pack we move on to Q2 though and we had a little bit of rain forecast for Q3 so my thought was just to get maybe one or two laps in for Q2 try and get our way as high up the order as we could and see where we can put the car. The car didn't feel too bad. Checks complete. All personnel be aware, we have a car leaving. The chicane before the hairpin closing out sector two gave me problems and it gives me problems every single year. I can never get the breaking point right or where I need to turn in. Uh, but without further ado, let's get to our runs for Q2.
So yet again, we give somebody else a tow. Our lap, again, isn't as good as it was in practice. 109.8. We know that there's a little bit more pace in the car. I need to find it through sector one. I'm very slow through the first few corners. Especially this chicane here. I always I get the breaking point wrong and I don't turn in early enough. And then the chicane that we end up following this one, it's it's just as bad for me. But we end up getting a little bit of a tow. I can't tell if it's Esteban Ocon or Alonso. It is Ocon. We end up getting a great tow from him. And right behind us, again, is another one of the Alpine cars. We seem to always get stuck between these two, or the Alfa Romeos, as we have our qualifying time. I don't know what it is. As soon as they go out, we end up filing in right between them, and I always end up getting pushed as I try to leave a little bit of space between me and the car in front. We're actually up two and a half tenths here on our final lap. We end up getting up to three tenths, three and a half tenths on our final lap, do way better than we could have. We end up in P13 on the grid for the race on Sunday. Without further ado, let us get into this race weekend and see what we can do from P13 on the grid. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race, and in whose honor the circuit would be renamed. With top speeds of around 210 miles per hour heading into the overtaking opportunity of turn 13, the 2.7 miles of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve are some of the quickest on the Formula One calendar. There are 14 corners in total, with 60% of the lap taken at full throttle. And average lap speeds clock in at about 130 miles per hour. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start, and this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position and P2 goes to Daniel Ricciardo. A strong showing from the Australian. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Norris, Carlos Sainz and Verstappen, Perez, Vettel, Stroll and Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Hamilton, Jackson and Sonoda, Ocon, Mick Schumacher, Kimi Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi, Mazepin, Latifi, Russell and Robert Schwartzman. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. P13 on the grid, looking pretty good. Going to go with an aggressive strategy. It seems to be working really well for us. Last race, we ended up coming in P6. The safety car definitely helped us. I'm not sure if we're going to get another one here. But nevertheless, let us go to five red lights for the start of our home Grand Prix, the Canadian Grand Prix. And five red lights are out, and we are underway in a decent start from us as Hamilton ends up taking that grid penalty, so he, ne he ends up next to us there. Sonoda gets the early jump on us as we try to send one down the inside of Schumacher, trying to keep our speed and pace. These first few corners, I'm surprised that we did not have any issues going through them. As now Ocon gets in front of us, we're just trying to settle our way in here as we sneak back by him on the inside, trying to find as much traction as we can out of the first few corners. Try and settle in real early into this race, knowing that it's going to be a long one. Our first lap was really good. I think we end up staying just in 14th. We take a nice look down the inside, up at the hairpin. As Gasly and Sonoda come together in the 8 and 9, we get a really good run on Sonoda heading into the hairpin. We switch it to the inside of him. Head up the inside, and we have Gasly sticking his nose in on the inside as well. We get turned around with contact between, I don't know who it was, Gasly or Sonoda. And there's now five of us coming down the main stretch. 
trying to get as much speed as we can so we don't end up having someone back into us coming to this final chicane. I think it was Gasly dipped in the pit. Something must have happened when he stuck his nose in there at the hairpin. We finish our first lap where we started with Yuki Sonoda right behind us. Yuki Sonoda was a pain for the entire race. He was always just in front of us or just behind us. Same with the Alpines. Ocon and Alonso always with us there. As we head up to lap five now and Hamilton getting held up by Lance Stroll cannot seem to get past the Alpine of Alonso. It's helped us out though because we're slowly pulling away from Sonoda with these three as a little bit of a DRS train in front of us. For a new strategy option. Understood, copy that. As Jeff decides it's proper time for us to change our strategy as we're doing a little bit better with the tires and we end up sending one around again at the hairpin, giving Sonoda a little bit more of a run down into the final chicane. We try our best to hold him off keep our nose in it, break a little bit later, turn in a little bit earlier as well. A very, oh, very cheeky wing. cut of that corner there, and we end up smashing our front wing. Is available on the MFD. For the rest of the lap, we try our absolute hardest to keep up with Hamilton, and it just isn't happening, so we have to duck in for our first pit stop, which is definitely a few laps too early for us. I think we were trying to look for around eight or nine for our first lap to come in, but we have to come in early. Yuki continuously gaining on us is not helpful so we have to get the new wing get a fresh set of tires come out into hopefully a little bit of clean air and maybe catch another few sets of guys coming out on their pits a little bit further down the race okay stay clear of the white line on the exit we'll receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross over we're going to come out just behind pierre gasly who's going to be just two seconds above as we move on to lap 10 now we've gotten way closer to gasly we're gonna do our best to get our best exit here. Going down the final long straight with DRS using okay. ERS. And we're Set only, we only have 10% so of your ERS left. We've been trying so hard to keep up with cars. I'm pretty sure we have some worn engine components as we absolutely send one down the inside He's coming in for his stop. of Pierre Gasly into the final chicane. And he starts to fight back at us. I believe we get a replay of what this looks like from the camera's point of view. As we swing out to the inside, Gasly, wheel to wheel, and we break just a little bit later, and we end up cutting the corner. I'm surprised we didn't get any kind of warning for that as Gasly swings again out to the outside, to try and take us into the first corner. Gasly dives down the inside, and we have to concede the place. So we just, we didn't break late enough. And now, once again, Esteban Ocon right on our tail, as now the three of us are gonna have to battle it out to try and find this 14th position. The AI always seemed to be very, very slow through the chicane. And I think there was the classic slow in, fast out because they were always very, very quick coming out onto the straight. As we summon down the outside of Gasly heading into the chicane. You made it Try to keep easy. the car on the road as it gets a little bit squirmy for us on the exit. And now Ocon probably having a look at Gasly seconds. as he gets ahead. Gasly loses out to Raikkonen and Ocon. I'm not exactly too sure what happened. I couldn't find anything in the replay that was worth showing. I think he just ended up breaking too late. Raikkonen and Ocon slip underneath and now they all have DRS trying to chase after young Aiden Jackson. As now Kimi Raikkonen sticks his nose up the inside and we cut him off nicely to keep our place. As we head on to the next lap, lap 12, Raikkonen gets a way better exit out of the chicane. We try to cut him off, but he still sticks his nose in there and gets the move done on us. We drop down to P15, and we're just going to try our best to stick with Raikkonen, knowing that the cars are pretty much similar pace, hoping that our tires are already a little bit warmer. I think Raikkonen's maybe one or two laps newer, but hopefully ours up the temperature with the ability to try and catch him and pass him and leave him in that little DRS train with Ocon and Gasly. DRS active. We think about going to the inside, but we don't have that much overtake to play with. Probably going to try and use it on the next straight. Trying to get a better exit again, and Ocon again right behind us as we go a little bit defensive to the inside so that he doesn't dive his way down 
the middle there. AI are very, very aggressive if you leave the door open for them. You have to make sure that you're covering off when you go into tight corners like that, or they will stick their nose in there. If you don't see the little proximity arrows and see what's going on, they're definitely going to stick their nose in there. As we send one real deep around Kimi Raikkonen into the final chicane, we broke way, way later than Raikkonen there and got the job done. Caution. Caution. Now a few laps later, we've had Esteban Ocon pass us on pure pace alone as we see Lance Stroll parked on the side of the road. Now Stroll ended up okay, parking clear. there for so long. We'll see in this replay here. Not sure what happened. I think he just, he hits the throttle. He just got on the throttle a little bit too quick. After watching back on the replay, he ends up sitting in this spot that he parks for a good 10 seconds. The car didn't move. And as, we watch, as I watched on the replay a little bit after this, his car starts to ghost, which causes us to get our safety. The officials are deploying the safety car due to multiple cars being stopped on track. Mind your delta. Check your MFD for a new. So knowing it's close option. enough to our pit stop, we're gonna head ourselves in. Gonna get our final pit stop done. Probably have to try and catch up to a few more cars, knowing that they're still gonna have to pit, and we're gonna be pitting under safety cars, so hopefully we can catch back up to them before the safety car restart. It's a decent pit stop from the crew. That Porsche tech you were racing. We are back underway, doing our absolute best to make sure that we catch complete. this safety car. See these tires through to the end now. It was very quick, but we check our MFD, and our turbo is really, okay, really close down, to being on its down. last legs. Your delta is negative, which means you are too far. As we pass Reduce the safety car, we know that we just have to stay behind Schumacher so that we catch up to everybody. Now we go to the safety car restart. Very, very tricky restart here with the chicane, we trying to get as much power down as you can, as fast as you can. We lose a little bit of time to Schumacher, and again, another one of the Alpha Tower is pushing and pressuring us off the safety car restart. And there's contact behind us. Gasly sticking his nose in where it doesn't belong again. Gasly on the soft tires, probably going to have a little bit more traction than us, especially on these cold safety car restart mediums that we're on that we have to run to the end of the race. We're just going to do what we can to stay next to Schumacher, hopefully get a couple of passes and create a little bit of separation between ourselves and the Alfa Romeo and the Alfa Tower is behind us. It's a decent run for us into the second last chicane. Still gonna try and do our best to try and maybe catch Schumacher at the hairpin and then maybe Mazepin a little bit later on. Another good run out of the final two corners. We send one down the inside of Schumacher. Trying to keep it clean on the exit. Back end still needs to heat up a little bit. The tires are still not right up to temperature. This is only the first lap after the safety car. We are up into P16 ahead of Mick Schumacher and Pierre Gasly. Chasing after the back of Nikita Mazepin. Good exit from us. Heading into turn one. And it's very, very slow. Very slow heading into the turn two and three as we send one around the outside of Mazepin trying to get the power down as quick as we can. Again, we have to send around the outside and be super tight as we cut him off heading down the corner itself. And just like that, we are back on our teammate's tail up in P14. Teammate seems to be going a little bit slow. I felt like anytime I ended up being behind Schwartzman, we were we were always breaking really early to try not to hit the back of him heading into any of the corners. So we're going to try and get past him and try and pick off Latifi. As again, we send one down the inside very, very easy on the brakes. Trying to be as smooth as we can coming out of that hairpin try and pick off the Latifi and hopefully make our way up to Raikkonen. Let me know in the comments below how you guys find that chicane. I feel like that chicane is different than it was last year. I okay, definitely feel clear. like it was different. Okay, the stewards have now enabled DRS. DRS is now online. We come around the first few corners. We get a fantastic exit. And we see that our teammate is actually out of the session. I'm not sure what happened if he spun out of that last chicane. He's going very, very slowly. He's currently parked in teeth in the 
I think he's parked in T3 right now. As we send one up the Robert inside of Latifi the with a little bit of DRS to boot. And we pull ourselves away from him very, very quickly. Up to lap 25 now, and we find ourselves in this little four-way battle here. Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez have been fighting each other for the last three, four laps, and it has given us the ability to try and fight them. We haven't quite got DRS, but we're going to try and get as close as we can and maybe use him as a bit of toes. Both the Red Bulls are very, very slow coming out of the chicane, letting Hamilton get away very cleanly. I know this isn't our fight, but we're going to do everything we can to try and stay with these guys, hopefully stay in DRS range, and continue to pull away from Mazepin. Because out of the hairpin we go, and the Red Bull just finds its feet halfway down the stretch. Sergio Perez with a little bit of DRS himself. But those Red Bull cars are just way too fast for us. And again, a little bit further on, lap 26 now, and Verstappen pressuring us. Perez slowly starting to walk away with the pace that he's got. And we just, we've come to terms with it. We have to let him pass. There's no sense in us fighting this fight. As we end up touching going into the hairpin, Max really wanting to get past us here. And as we head down the stretch, there's he's right alongside us. There's no sense in us fighting this fight. We're not going to deploy any overtake. We're just going to use our DRS. Hopefully right, stay a little bit closer with him. We're seeing a lot of power from the turbo charge in now. Loss of power on the turbo. As the back end gets a little squirrely and we hear that we're losing power from the turbo, we're definitely going to have to replace it. As we move on to lap 35 now, we end up staying between Mazepin and Verstappen. Finally, Sebastian Vettel, who had pitted a few laps after safety car on his medium tires now, worked his way up through the field. We end up doing a really, really good job in keeping everybody at bay and just keeping our race to ourselves. Wasn't anything too crazy, nothing too heroic as we come to the final chicane. Nice, neat, and tidy. As the back end once again slips out from behind us. And you can see just how close Vettel was as we get off the gas to just coast through the finish line. And Vettel okay, comes screaming by us. Home. But that is good enough for us for a P9 at our so home then, Grand Prix. So it's time Prix. to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. More points for Valtteri Bottas, further solidifying his lead at the top of the table. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Well, for me, it's got to be Lewis Hamilton. The multiple world champion may be the boring choice at this point, but you can't argue that he's a driver deserving of his reputation. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, good work from the owner drivers' team this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. So that'll be it for us as we move up a little bit in the standings. Before we get there, we always have questions from Claire. You were cutting your way through the field during the race. Uh, we need more. We need more hype for the arrow guys. So we're going to answer for the arrow. And of course, we're always doing this for the team. Happy to see the smile on their faces. Appreciate your time. That is going to be it for us today. We do a little bit better catching up and slowly beating our rival Kimi Raikkonen. I was surprised to see that the Alfa Romeos don't have any amount of points this year. With how much we're fighting with those two, it's it's actually kind of confusing. Thank you guys all so much for the support. We've Please like, comment, and subscribe like if you guys have any suggestions on how to make it better. We do have a quick team event that we have to deal with. Yeah, we have to train everybody. We can't let everybody yeah, hack us. Well. Thank, Thank you, you guys so much. I will see you in the next one.